Welcome to Instant Deck Techs. The aim of this series is to give you a short, concise guide on how to build a certain deck. It won't cover every card, but we'll go through all the categories and go over the types of cards needed to make the deck work. Any card mentioned will be down in the description below. The commander of this deck is Golas Tireless Pilgrim. Golas costs 5 generic mana. It is a 3-5 legendary artifact creature scout. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a land card and put that card onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. It also has 2 and a Wooburg, Exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn without paying their mana costs. The aim of this deck is to get Golas out and then use his ability to cheat huge creatures into play, which will then win us the game. While Golas does cheat out all spells, this build won't be running too many large instants and sorceries. I also know that Golas is a very popular landfall commander. If you want to take the deck in that direction, I would recommend watching our deck tech on Omnath, Locus of Creation, as it's a very good base for that style of deck. Links are down in the description below. For this deck tech and cheating threats into play, we'll be running Gigantha as a companion. The restriction of having no cards in our starting deck have more than one of the same mana symbols in its cast is made up for by the fact that we will have easy access to Gigantha's tap ability, and the ability to make the Wooburg mana we need to trigger Golos. It also makes the deck monumentally cheaper as well, as it will effectively be a green-blue deck splashing the other colours. The first section we're going to go over is the ramp. We want to be getting Gigantha and Golos out as quickly as possible, so we can start cheating things into play. I would firstly recommend cards that can look up tutoring non-basic forests. These will work great with any budget jewels which we'll go over in the land section. Farseek also has a spot in this deck, as it does the reverse of the previous cards. We're also going to be running the full suite of good green ramp. Rampant Growth, Kadama's Reach, Cultivate, that kind of thing. Also, as our commanders aren't too restricted in their casting costs, you can even run Soul Ring and also Arcane Signet. We want to run at least 8 bits of ramp, but you can easily run up to 12 here, as eventually we may need to hard cast some of our big threats. We also want to run some extra ways of cheating things into play, so we have some redundancy for Golos but it also never helps to have them at the same time as Golos, so we can have some really explosive turns. I wouldn't run less than 6, but you could easily run up to 10 here. These cards I've listed here all let us cheat cards into play from our hand or our library. You can also look at Cascade, which will be great in the deck. Apart from Maelstrom Wanderer, the cards are listed here offer repeatable Cascade, but you can definitely run more of it on single time effects if there's something that you like. We can also run Flame Shadow Conjuring and mimic that, to give us additional value on the things we are cheating into play and you can also run Rings of Bright Hearth to double Golos' activated ability. Joda and Fist of Suns will also synergize with Gigantha, so we can tap it and put anything from our hand into play. And in a similar vein, Sise can go through our whole deck looking for some powerful legendary creatures. The threats of this deck is really where you can make it your own, and it can be tailored to any style and budget. If you like Eldrazi, then you can run some big Eldrazi. If you like dragons, then you can run some big dragons. On screen now are some cards I would consider, as they have interesting and cool effects which don't break the bank. But again, this is the section where you can really make the deck your own, so play the cards you love. Being able to control what's on top of our library can be very useful in this deck, as it means we can have a level of control when activating Golas. Some of the cards here may not be as budget friendly as others, so run what's available to you. We can also run some effects that untap our creatures, as untapping Gigantha especially will mean we are more likely to activate Golas more than once per turn. For the card draw, this will be very much dependent on what other effects you are playing. Unless it's something you want to be cheating into play, I would try to keep the CMC of these as low as possible. And also having Scry on them will be a big help, so it'll help us fix the top of our library. I would also, where possible, try to keep this in blue and green. The removal in our deck will also be dependent on the type of other effects you are running, as you can also find removal on some of the big creatures we're going to be cheating into play. Like the card draw, try to keep it in blue and green to help you have access to it early in the game, and then you can add more colours the higher the CMC of the spell. Golas and Gigantha are very important to the deck working. As such, I would want to run some protection to help keep them around. When playing counter spells, resist the temptation and only counter things which either directly affect your board state or prevent your opponents from winning. Anything less than that should be left alone. I'm a bit biased, but as this deck can run Moldrotha, means I think it should run Moldrotha. For some other recursion, Forever Young could be very strong in this deck, as you can put the three best creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library and then cast them all with Golos. Reclaim as well does a very efficient version of this effect and can get anything back. One of the main reasons of running Gigantha is to help with the mana base. This deck could very easily get away with running all basic lands. The main downside to that is that you become very dependent on Golos and especially Gigantha. If you have shocks and fetches available to you, then run them. They will make the deck more consistent. If not, then with the spells we are running that shoot of non-basic forests from the deck, look at the triomes, the cycling lands, and the battle lands. Unfortunately at the moment, these aren't complete cycles, so I would look for a mix of those three. To help with this, you can also run Cross and Verge to tutor up non-basic forests or plains. Outside of these, Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, and Cascading Cataracts are all good includes, and would probably be the choice to tutor for from Golas's ETB effect. While we're talking about the mana base, these four cards all make it so that our lands can tap for any colour. They are not super budget, but they can be very good in the deck if you have them. 
Also, personally speaking, I would not run any utility lands in this deck. The only possible exception to this could be Field of the Dead, but if you're doing so on a budget, be prepared to play a lot of dual lands that come into play tapped. This video was a request from a viewer. The next couple of deck decks you will see will also be from requests in the comments. If you have a deck you'd like to see, please let us know. If you like the look of those, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.